In the end of 2016, one of the most important things to do in administration is have more data on less space. Let's see how Microsoft help us to achieve this goal. Hi friends, this is Nick from Anobi Solutions and today I'm going to look into data deduplication. This is not a new feature of course, it was added in Windows Server 2012, but Microsoft decided to redesign the whole idea behind the deduplication. Of course, in 2012 there are a few limitations related to how big the volume that you want to deduplicate is or how big are the files that need to be deduplicated. But before we go into this, let's uh, say a few words about the deduplication. What exactly is deduplication? It basically is a mechanism that identifies and removes deduplication without, uh, within data without compromising the data integrity and has the ultimate goal to store more data on less space. So in general, what it does, it uh, segments data into small uh, variable sized chunks and then identifies the duplicate chunks, replace the the chunks uh, uh, with coffee uh, and the copies with a reference, and then it uses compression to compress these chunks. So, in general, what it does, it's going to look into uh, the data that you have, and it's going to find any information that has several appearances, and it's going to compress this data so that, in general, you will have, for example, a share that is 100 gigabytes, but it's going to take around 80 gigabytes on your disk, so you can use the rest of the 20 gigabytes to, to store more data. And of course, this data is going to be compressed. Uh, compressed as well. So uh, what are the enhancements that uh, the duplication um, has in 2016 um, compared to 2012? It's because I said it's going to support volumes that are up to 64 terabytes instead of uh, 10 terabytes in Windows 2012 and it's going to support file sizes that are uh, up to one terabyte instead of uh, the 2012 that was uh, not a good idea to use the duplication on files that are around one terabyte in size. So there are of course other um, important features like support for nano server or support for cr cluster rolling updates that was not present in 2012 but uh, of course this is um, a thing that uh, you can read on Technet if you if you have more information if you want more information, and um, uh, requirements for the volumes that you can use for data du deduplication is uh, that you cannot um, or it's not a good idea to use deduplication on a system or a boot volume. The volume um, might be partitioned uh, using the uh, MBR master boot record or the uh, GUID partition table, GPT format. So, um, and of course, it needs to be NTFS or REFS file system. Um, it's not a good idea to use uh, deduplication on USB drives. And uh, in general, it, the data deduplication is not available for client operating systems like Windows des uh, Windows 10, for example. So um, let's start with the demo. I'm going to install a deduplication on my server that I've prepared. Um, basically, the deduplication is a role within the file services um, added in 2012 and 2016. And uh, for my lab, I have a single server that I've uh, prepared for a uh, file server. The only thing that I want to do is I'm going to open the disk management just to configure the disk that I've attached. I'm going to uh, make the, uh, the disk online and I'm going to initialize. Of course, you need to be um, initializing the disk with master boot record or with partition table. I'm going to use MBR for now. And I'm going to create the simple volume that uh, I'm going to use an NTFS or 
um, you need to use for the duplication RAFS. Uh, XFAT is not a good candidate. So I'm going to leave the default NTFS and I'm going to finish the process so we can um, allocate the space. Now that we have the um, disk and the volume already present under my um, computer, I'm going to open the uh, server manager, go to manage, add roles and features, next, 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 expand the file and storage services, and then uh, file and iSCSI services, and in here you will find the data deduplication um, role that is available. So I'm going to click next, next, and install the role. And during that time, I just want to say what are, in general, a good candidate for um, de uh, enabling data deduplication on. So Microsoft are saying that data deduplication can be used for a few different uh, things, like um, um, shares for general use that you have um, different folders and files that are used by your um, your users during the day. So this is a good candidate, but depending on the uh, data that you want to, uh, to enable the duplication on, the uh, deduplication is going to compress um, and provide additional space in a different way. So for example, um, it, as I said, general file shares are a good candidate, but it will compress the data and uh, the available uh, um, space that it can free up is around 30%. Um, of course, for software deployment shares, uh, the data deduplication is uh, a good choice because in there you have different MSI packages, different EXEs that are um, sometimes the same, so the deduplication can save you up to 50-60% of your data. Of course, it's um, um, a good candidate for data deduplication is uh, VHD libraries, and this can um, this can save up to 70-80% and VDI deployments, virtual desktop infrastructure deployments using Hyper-V are also a good candidate and can save uh, around 60-70% of, of the space available. The last thing that Microsoft mentioned is a good candidate is the virtualized backups. So backup application running as Hyper-V guests saving backup data to mounted VHDs can be also um, Data deduplication can also be um, enabled there. So now that I have the data deduplication enabled, you don't need to make a restart on the server. The only thing you need to do is go to the um, file and storage services and go to volumes. In there, you will see present your volumes that you have. This is my boot volume. Of course, the, the system reserve volume is also present in here. But this is the e-partition that um, I will use to enable my data deduplication. So if you right click on the volume that you want to enable data deduplication, you will see that uh, there is a configure data deduplication task. So if you click on here, um, a small window will appear, and of course data deduplication is not a uh, high-tech advanced thing. Um, it's um, going to do uh, what it's supposed to do, and this is only compress data and uh, uh, provide more space to be available for you. Of course, there are different scenarios that data deduplication is still not compatible with. Uh, so in order for you or before you enable data deduplication on your shares, be sure that you check what are the um, what are the options that are available to work with data deduplication and make sure that you make your plan correctly. So for example, um, I was um, doing a migration in the past month and uh, I used data deduplication uh, uh, with DFS replication and it was working pretty much really well. Um, of course, Microsoft are saying that DFS replication is working just fine with uh, data deduplication. So let's continue with configuring my data deduplication. And under here, you have um, data deduplication disabled, the general purpose file server, that this is the option that you're going to use if you are enabling data deduplication on a volume that is used for 
general file services, of course. Um, the other option is virtual desktop infrastructure or VDI infrastructure. I've heard uh, rumors that uh, uh, it can compress up to 80-90% of the VDI infrastructure and uh, terabytes of data can become gigabytes, which is amazing. And the last option is virtualized backup server. Of course, this is the option where you have uh, backup applications running uh, as Hyper-V guests and saving backup data to mounted VHDs. Um, of course, this is again related to VHDs being compressed. So, in my case, I'm going to use the general purpose file server. And um, here you can see that uh, I have the option to say um, what are the files that I want to be deduplicated. So, when you have a file share, for example, when, when you have a new newly created file, the deduplication will not occur um, before this file reaches three days. So, um, because few topics are saying that the duplication can decrease performance, Microsoft, on the other hand, are saying that after the redesign of the duplication, it's uh, pretty much the, the, the degradation of performance is pretty much non. Um, you'll not be able to find any, but just in case, um, if you want, you can. Uh, change this number to a bigger number or change it to um, less. The other thing is you uh, can add extensions to be excluded. And of course, Microsoft are saying that uh, using um, deduplication on exchange databases or, or on databases in general, it's not recommended. So don't enable deduplication on, on volumes that have um, for example, exchange databases, SQL databases, um, Active Directory databases, or any logs related to it. So in here, you can add any custom exceptions, any custom exceptions that you want the deduplication not to um, to work on them. And if you um, look onto the bottom, there is a set deduplication schedule that you can use to enable the background optimization. So in general, um, the the duplication will run as a low priority task and you can configure a uh, throughput optimization on a specific dates um, and times. Um, for example, if uh, during the day your file server is really being used, heavily used, you can configure the data deduplication to work during the night so that you can make sure that uh, there is no performance degradation during the day. So, in general, if I um, leave the default settings and click Apply, and click OK, and click Apply once again, I will see that the only thing that it's going to change is there is a deduplication rate right here in percentages, and it will say what is the deduplication um, compression that was done on my volume. So now that uh, I've configured the duplication, of course, um, I've uh, went ahead and copied some files. And the files pretty much consist of uh, Windows Server 2016 uh, ISO file. And let's see if uh, I'll be able to compress um, or use the duplication to compress this uh, information so we can see how basically this is working. So what I've did is um, I've configured the deduplication files or order than uh, zero days so that I can uh, um, go ahead and deduplicate uh, the files that are currently um, into my um, volume. But uh, what I'll do is I'll open a PowerShell uh, as administrator. And what I'll do from here is I'm going to try and manually start the deduplication jobs so that we can make sure that um, the deduplication is working as it should. Let's see what... Um, what will happen. So um, let me just open a PowerShell as administrator. Yes. And the, the there are three tasks that I need to start in order for me to uh, start my deduplication jobs. And they are start. Um, the job and I'm going to choose the volume and the volume is E, and I'm going to start the type, which is going to be optimization. And press enter. 
Okay, it's currently um, the optimization, the schedule type is manual and the start time you can see right here. Uh, there is a progress bar and the state is currently queued. So um, I'm going to monitor this, uh, this job to see if it's going to um, start uh, configuring my volume. And by using the command get dead of job volume E type optimization, I will see that there is a 15% progress currently and the state is currently running on volume E. So if I uh, check the optimization from time to time, it should, uh, it should change. Of course, I can see that there is a start time in here and the progress is pretty much doing really fast. So I'm going to pause the video and see uh, when the progress is at 100% and we can resume from there. So now that my optimization job finished successfully, you can see that it completed, I can go ahead and check to see if I refresh the settings right here, if there is uh, any deduplication uh, ratio that was uh, configured. And you can see that um, using the um, ISO files of the Windows Server 2016, which are around 5 gigabytes each, um, I've copied this uh, four times, so I can have pretty much the same files and see how the deduplication will free this space. I can see that it made a compression radio of 77%, uh, which saved me around 15.7 gigabytes of data, which makes my disk, which is currently 40 gigabytes, currently available with 35.5 gigabytes. And if I go ahead and open this PC, I will see that this space is still available for me to store any additional information. So in general, if I open the properties in here, I will see that the size is around 20 gigabytes, but instead of 20 gigabytes, it's only using around five. Isn't that cool, guys? I think it is. So using the deduplication will make your uh, life as administrator and um, basically working with uh, more free space available for you than, uh, than the free space that you even bought when you, you know, when you buy your hard disks and add your servers. So this is again a thing that um, you need to check and you need to plan prior to uh, using it before because there could be applications that are not compatible with this and uh, You need to carefully plan what are the shares for you to enable that application So in general, this is the video of how you can install and configure data deduplication and so I think that this is a great feature that uh, almost every administrator should take advantage of This was Nick from NLB solutions if you like the video, you can always subscribe to NLB Solutions. Uh, it's a channel that dedicates on um, technology and how to make an IT administrator life easier. Which is a thing that I um, pretty much am sure that most of the people look into to make their lives easier. If you like the video, you can always hit the uh, like button. If you dislike it, you can always hit the uh, dislike button and leave a comment to tell me what could be improved in my future videos. Of course, as you already know, I'm responding to almost every comment in my channel. So if you have any questions, you can always put them in the comment section below and I will answer them as soon as possible. This was Nick once again. Thank you very much for viewing and see you soon.